everybody, this is Nia Filer. I'm here with the astrological message. Not so much weekly anymore. I haven't been here for three weeks. Things are intense in my life, but I'm always coming back to you folks. I love doing these videos and I love updating you. And I feel it has an essence that I want to kindle, in a sense. So don't worry about me disappearing anywhere anytime soon. Amen. So let's talk about what's happening in the upper spheres, in the heavens, and how it affects us in the next week and a half. And if you know, the, there's one thing I wanna want you to keep from this video, is that this is a week and a half that could be fast forward, fast moving <clears throat> regarding energies and emotions, all kinds of energies and emotion, both frustrating and you know debilitating or angry ones, and happy ones and optimistic ones and feeling of omnipotency. And my advice to you is put a regulator um, on your feelings for the next week and a half and avoid, try avoiding the extremes on both ends. So <clears throat> we are at the time that, you know, if you've seen my videos lately, if you've seen my predictions for 2022 if uh, you've ever had a talk with me and you know that we've entered a time in 2020 with covid um that astrologers have been talking about for a long time i remember being in a um in a talk by maurice fernandez about life before and after 2020 back in 2008 or 2002 i don't exactly remember but a long time ago and astrologers are not magicians. They always look back at what happened and try and suggest what would, what can or might happen again. And this time that began with COVID in 2020 has always been a time that humanity has been plagued by a plague or a natural catastrophe or both that severely affected the work market and the economies and Thus far, a great update has been needed, not only in the rules and the regulations of these economies, but also the relationship between the people and the ruler. And we're talking about from the Magna Carta back at 1200 AD and up to the French Revolution. And after that, there's always been a big war that took down powers and made new ones and changed the lines on the maps and as i said if you've been hearing me before i've always said you know that hopefully we'll avoid the part of the war <laughs> this time around but in the last few weeks who have been which have been very energetic as you know if you've heard my videos and very militant both on a personal level very aggressive, both on a personal level and a general level, a public level, an international level, we've seen that aggression and militancy flare up. And I don't like to talk about it. I don't like to predict, you know, anything bad or talk about my anxieties, but this has the potential to become the perfect storm over the next couple of years. Yes, folks, not months, years. I mean, world economy and and um, world politics and geopolitics are going to change immensely in the next couple of years and powers are going to go up and down and this has been coordinated perfectly the attack on ukraine by russia to the usa's pluto return so i'm doubtful you know if Putin isn't working with astrologers to coordinate the attack that really signifies an attack on the West at the same time that America is going through its Pluto return it's just baffling if you don't use astrology as a tool um, hopefully this could be contained I'm still hopeful this could be contained but right now pray for peace Pray for peace in your own life. Pray for peace in your own heart. Pray for peace in your communities. Pray for peace in the streets and the lives that you lead. Pray for peace in the world. 
Um, we are under all of the next week and a half, both the influence of Mars and Venus conjunct. And again, it's very lively and could be very beautiful and very enjoyable, but very feisty as well and combative and um, could be irritated more easily by people you are in contact with and a relationship with and things could be more irritating financially as well you know so it's not it's not such a easy time especially when mars is in capricorn where it is exalted and extremely strong overpowering that venus and the other aspect is that the sun is going to sextile uranus in just a few days on the second of march and that is really a beautiful aspect that allows us to update ourselves better more quickly more easily and even with some excitement really understand how flexibility could allow us to be more in tune with the ever-changing world around us this is an opportunity in a sense to ride this wave and not be tumbled in it like a washing machine it can allow us that buoyancy and dexterity if you will um, as well, Mercury, planet of orientation, and our mind, our cerebral cortex, is conjunct Saturn over the next couple of days. This means that whatever we decide now, that our moves now, um, count. Count in a strategic manner. Count in a strategic fashion that is going to determine what would happen in the longer run. So it's an important time. It, we could be more somber. We could be more judgmental regarding ourselves or others. But that's not the point of it. Making right decisions and understanding the right things and the truth and aligning with it is. And then on March 3rd, we have Pluto conjunct Mars and Venus. And as they are heading to that conjunction with Pluto, we could see things becoming more combative, more militant, more evil in a sense, you know, more extreme and total and and out of reins, you know, like really wild. And, and that is flared up by the oxygen that this new moon on the 2nd of March in Pisces conjunct the old and new rulers of Pisces, <laughs> Jupiter and Neptune is bringing into the sky so we have the sun and the moon conjunct jupiter and uh, neptune in the sky new moon very very spiritual artistic simple eternal energies coming in this longing for something more unison for something more simple for something more loving for something more comforting the sensitivity is heightened extremely we could feel that we are a leaf thrown by greater winds right now and we see in front of our eyes all these greater circles enveloping and we cannot do anything to affect that development in another way we could be feeling omnipotency and a sense of you know um unrealism about how things will be and how much we can cope with things and what we can do so there's a dissonance between what is happening with the personal planets in the sky mercury mars and venus mercury and mars conjunct pluto uh, i'm sorry uh, uh, venus and mars conjunct pluto mercury conjunct saturn you know two very heavy planets and heavy signs and this new moon, which is all about Shanti, Om, Om Namaste, you know, something like that. You know, it's, it's, a, it's not of this world. And in a way, it can connect us to those muses. It can connect us to that eternal energy, to that spirituality, to that creativity, to that meditative state, to nature, to creation. And definitely to the longing for something better, for something softer. But the personal planets are right now 
and tectonic shifts. So the dissonance between the two can produce all kinds of feelings, either a feeling of, you know, being helpless against the, the, the current waves or a sense of omnipotency and a belief that you could, you know, um, in a way, lose grounds of reality and become overexpanded, have no borders at all. And in the militant sense, that frightens me because that can give this, um, this war um, this could be uncontrolled in the next week and a half and or, or really flare up to be the perfect firestorm and hopefully things would be contained but just saying and that goes on for us in our personal lives as well you know because we have on the second on the first we have a uh, sun sex uranus these are all long-term effects and then on the second we have mercury conjunct saturn and the new moon conjunct uh, uh, conjunct uh, Neptune and, and Jupiter in Pisces. Very, very out of worldly, very spiritual, very artistic, very soft, and, and really not in sync with everything that is happening. And then on the fifth, we have the Sun conjunct Jupiter, which could be a happy, happy, joy, joy time, you know, a time of more optimism sometimes unrealistic optimism but it doesn't only heighten love it doesn't only heighten life sun attributes it also heightens ego sun attribute so if i'm coming out to this world from love i might be heightening my love at this time but if i'm coming out of this world out to this world from my ego my ego could be enhanced at this time that's something we all should be careful from but when i'm looking at world powers and aggressors i'm afraid how this effect might play out on them and then um the sixth is a bit difficult so is the seventh the seventh looks better but the sixth and the seventh are not good days to actually go into arguments and especially confrontations in front of authorities in your life. So, that's about everything I had to say. There's readings with me, courses and private lessons. You can reach me. All the details are at the end of the slide. And I want to thank you for sharing these and commenting on them. They expose these videos to more people. May we all live long and prosper. This is Neophyler. Bye-bye.